It is a particular honor to introduce their, our first speaker today, President Frederick Willem de Klerk, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993, because of the leaders of the world, he is one of the handful who actually got rid of nuclear weapons, actually did it. He's known for his courage in tearing down the wall of apartheid. He's not known for tearing down one of the bricks of the wall of nuclear annihilation. President Willem de Klerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's good to be here, and it's such an important subject that we are discussing. 74 years after Hiroshima, the world's nuclear weapons arsenals continue to pose an existential threat to mankind. After so many decades of efforts to limit and eliminate nuclear weapons, it should be clear by now that none of the nuclear weapon states have the slightest intention of dispensing with their own nuclear weapons capability. There is indeed general agreement about the need to stop the proliferation of nuclear weapons. And nuclear weapon states may from time to time be willing to enter into agreements regarding the rationalization of their nuclear weapons arsenals. But there is no indication that they are in any way prepared to do much more than to give lip service to the elimination of this fundamental threat to human existence. Only three states have ever rid themselves of a nuclear weapons capability. Kazakhstan and Ukraine agreed to divest themselves of the nuclear weapons that they had inherited from the old Soviet Union. And in 1989, we in South Africa decided to dismantle our nuclear weapons capability. We did so because possession of nuclear weapons no longer made any sense. We embarked on our nuclear weapons program in 75 because of the growing threat of a superpower in our region and because we did not belong to an alliance that would help to protect us. We discovered that the best means of promoting our security was to have our own weapons of mass destruction, but also to reach agreement on the establishment of a non-racial constitutional democracy that would assure the rights and freedoms of all our peoples. And by so doing, we also removed the source of conflict with our own people and with our neighboring states in Southern Africa. Countries, ladies and gentlemen, will be inclined to produce nuclear weapons if they have the ability to do so, if they perceive that they are threatened by a nuclear weapon state or by a state with overwhelming conventional weapons superiority, and if they do not belong to an international alliance that provides them with credible protection against such threats. The world is now moving away from the unipolar military supremacy of the United States. The geostratic tectonic plates are shifting from East Asia to the Middle East, to Eastern Europe and to the Baltic. My fear is that states with the ability to produce nuclear weapons will do so as quickly as they can if they perceive themselves to be threatened by an existing nuclear weapon state or by states with overwhelming conventional weapon supremacy. And if, no longer, if they no longer have confidence in the alliances that have protected them thus far. This would be an enormous setback for our vision of a world without nuclear weapons. The solution to the possibility of further escalation of nuclear weapons lies in the credible removal of the perceived threat 
posed by nuclear weapon states and states with overwhelming conventional military power. It also lies in the resolution of the underlying sources of injustice and inequity in international relations, just as it did in the case of South Africa 30 years ago. And by the way, may I just say, somebody reminded me, today on the 20th of September, it's exactly 30 years since I was inaugurated as President of South Africa. I accordingly agree with President Mikhail Gorbachev's proposal that this summer should adopt a statement calling upon all leaders of nuclear weapons powers to reaffirm without delay the proposition that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. We should remind the leaders of nuclear weapon states that they should reaffirm the inadmissibility of, inadmissibility of nuclear war and return to the negotiating table to agree on reducing and eliminating their nuclear arsenal. The future, ladies and gentlemen, of humanity may depend on it. Thank you.